Hi guys, welcome back to another video, back on the VFR. Today's D-Day, so all this work I've been putting into this, to this engine, I'm really hoping today, fingers crossed, we might be able to get this thing started up today. So what have I got to do today? So this morning I actually received the head gaskets. I was totally not expecting that. I thought this was gonna come in the new year. Um, by surprise, they arrived today. I actually thought it was the shims arriving this morning, but it's head gaskets. Shims apparently are still scheduled to be delivered today. So hopefully we get the shims so that if I can get the shims in, I can get um, pretty much everything built. So also I found, as you saw in the video in the beginning, all my valve stem seals, which I've been looking for forever. I found the packet of 16. I actually had already changed five of these because I had, had five laying around and I had already changed five. Um, you guys saw me grind some of the valves down and I changed those as well. So what I'm going to do is, um, after everybody's advice, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all the valves. So I'm going to do that today, lap all the valves. And once I've lapped them all and I've cleaned everything up, I'm going to replace those valve stem seals as well. So the valves will be done. The stem seals will be done. It'll be a new head gasket. It'll be um, uh, new shims. Um, all the valve clearances will be done. So... And yesterday we did a leak down test and our rings seem to be in perfect order. So once I get this, I'm confident that we're going to have a nice sweet running engine. Also, we're going to have a much better compression, I would imagine as well. <laughs>
I am back. So this is the next day, yesterday. It was a pain doing these valves. I hate doing valves. It took me forever, but I managed to get them done and I've put the heads back in. Everything's been talked up, head gaskets are in. Uh, also, I put all the shims in. The shims came yesterday afternoon as well while I was working on the bike. So I put in all the shims based on the measurements that I had taken when I did the calculation before. Obviously, I've been sort of grinding down valves, so I'm sure all of those numbers are gonna change. So I'm gonna have to put the cams on, do the clearance tests again, and see if any of them need to be changed again. I did buy a, a load of different sizes, so I got quite a few spare, smaller sizes as well. So if I need to drop any of them down a size, um, then, I should be able to do that. I should have enough shims to do that. So I'm gonna do that now. I've also done a leak down test as well, which I'll show you guys real briefly. With Before I put the cameras on, it's a lot easier just to make sure that all the valves and everything are sealing up good. And um, then we can get the cameras on, do the clearances, and then we can do a compression test. All right, guys, I am back on the bike. This is a couple of days later. We're actually in the new year. This is the 1st of January. I've had a break off the bike, it was doing my head in and I just had a lot of things going on around Christmas and New Year's, family and all that stuff and I've literally only got about 10 minutes on this. Um, one of the reasons why I had also had to take a break is I think I broke my compression tester, the readings were just off and I think I think I broke something. Um, so I had to order another one which came yesterday, it's arrived, I ordered a digital one this time, I'm going to try this one out, hopefully I can get a bit more accurate reading with the digital one. Um, so I'm about to do the compression reading now. I suspect that I'm going to get a low reading on cylinder number one because I think I'm not 100% sure I've done the valves very wrong on that. But it could have been the other tester, but we'll see. Well, let's get straight into the test. Right, guys, here is the new tester. As you can see, it's a digital tester. And currently I've got it set up to PSI. So I've got this actually connected to cylinder number two. Um, so we're going to do a quick compression test on that one. I think we were about, not bad, 139 PSI. About 139 PSI. So that's our first cylinder. And here is our cylinder number four. So this is the second front cylinder. This is also one of the cylinders, the one on the right, that gave us the lower compression readings before we started. So let's see what reading we get this time. One forty-one and a half. So just a little bit more than the other one. I think we had like one ten on this cylinder before. So it's very close, 139, 141. So that is good so far on the front cylinders. Right, so we're on the rear cylinders now. So we're gonna do cylinder number three, which was our lowest compression reading. I think we had about 95 PSI originally here. These are the two that I'm not 100% sure about whether I got these ones right, but we will see. So we're gonna do compression tests on cylinder number three. sound right that come up at 200 psi um let's do that one again so i've also done a compression test on my other tester which i thought was faulty but seems to be giving me almost 200 on here again so i'm not sure why it's so high someone guys tell me what you think is that right yeah guys this is going over 200 psi so something's not right what i just remembered though is I think I need to double check the clearances because obviously I've ground the valves. Some of these clearances might be out again. So maybe the valves are not even opening much, which could be partly a reason for that. Um, someone will be able to tell me if that would contribute to me getting such a high compression. But I think that's it. And I just remembered since the few days I've had off, I haven't had a chance to double check the valve clearances. So that's the next job to do. But for Today, I'm just doing this quick test to see what comes up. So anyway, let's do number cylinder number one now, over here. It looks 
we've got 138. So that seems good, 138. So we had 139, 141, 138. And this one is, the, I'm not sure what's going on here. So this one I have to look into. I have to go around and do all the valve clearances and just double check them all. Especially this one, because for some reason we're way over compression here. But a good sign that all of these are almost around 140. They've all increased, which is great. Especially this one that was quite low. So unfortunately, I won't have time to do that in this video. So next video, I'm going to be doing all the valve clearance, check them all again, see if I need to change any of the shims again. Definitely find out what's going on with this cylinder here. So guys, that's where I'm going to have to leave it today. It's just a just wanted to get this video sort of finished and get this compression test done. So obviously, it's still like we've got another issue, but it looks like we're moving in the right direction. So hopefully, I can get this sorted out. So guys, until the next video, thanks for watching. Please comment, let me know what you guys think. Give me any tips as well. And please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Go and pray.